We are all set. All right, so Katrina, I will let you kick it off as the Mid-America PTTC representative. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Katrina Weaver. I am the Director of Finance and Operations here at Act Missouri, and I will be your host for today's session. Although funded by SAMHSA, the views expressed in this workshop do not necessarily represent the views, policies, and positions of SAMHSA. Next slide, please. At the Mid-America PTTC, we are tasked with providing substance misuse prevention, training, and technical assistance throughout Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. This means strengthening and supporting organizations' efforts to implement evidence-based prevention strategies, ultimately promoting safe and healthy drug-free communities across the region. Many say collaboration is the key to effective substance misuse prevention, but we strive for something stronger than collaboration. We want community. From a small rural town's one-person prevention team to a county coalition and clear up to the state level leadership, we are all on the same team. The more we come together to support each other on the mission, the more we can each make our communities safer and healthier. At our core, we believe that prevention is better together and that together we are stronger. The Mid-America PTTC is housed at ACT Missouri, and we've been serving at the grassroots level for over 31 years. Next slide, please. We'd like to take a moment and reflect on the power of words. We are all prevention leaders in our teams, our community, and our field. Together, we can use our words to create positive change. Next slide, please. Our three-part evaluation webinar series featuring Cindy Ferris begins this Thursday. Message me in chat if you need further information. And also listed is a podcast, episode number 68, available on our webpage. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you very much for that, <laughs> Katrina. And oh, so beautiful. Prevention is so much better together. It is it is. And today I see a Zoom room full of prevention leaders here today that have come together to, to learn and grow and help make this world just a little bit, a little bit better day by day, conversation by conversation. And as you, you likely saw in the event posting that, you know, in prevention, our work is often dictated by funders work plans, emerging trends, and that, that never ending to do list that just leaves you feeling overwhelmed, overworked. And oftentimes I've been there feeling a little burnout. Our motivation can take a hit and hoping that this session we can reignite your passion, your spark and, and your motivation to, to keep doing the important work that is prevention that you do. And that starts with why and living in alignment with your why, why you do the work that you do. Today is gonna to be very interactive, chatting with each other in the large group, in the breakout rooms as well. We're gonna put a Google Doc in the chat box in a little bit. That is the workbook for this session. We'll also put it in the chat box as a PDF file if for some reason, firewalls, issues, that doesn't wanna play nights with the Google Doc, no worries. We'll We'll get a good workaround there for you as well. Also, once you get to know your why, why you do the work that you do, bringing that into your engagement with stakeholders, with community members, helps attract and align those folks that believe what you believe. It's a powerful session. This, this is one of my favorite sessions. And yeah, I, as you can tell, I get really passionate about this one, but let's just go ahead and keep moving forward. All right. So as you can see, prevention is better together and just got to tell, so tell you that quick disclaimer. 
what we're going to share in this session isn't necessarily representative of the views of the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services or the Mid-America PTTC. This is what Carrie and I have put together. So there's our good little disclaimer, but follow suit prevention is better together. All those beautiful logos behind those logos are caring, committed, driven prevention leaders that want to come together to help you do the amazing work that you do. A little bit about myself, Dave Clausen, the owner of DJC Solutions. Uh, back in 2015, I wrote motivational interviewing for campus police. And before that, uh, I was actually the co-director of the Mid-America PTTC. So I see some familiar faces in the room. Great to see you all again. But I have since stepped out on my own and get to work with even more amazing people across the country. I could go into a whole lot more about my bio, but I want to share a little little personal glimmer into to why I do what I do. Because I don't know if you can tell it, but I used to be shy. I'm talking shy, but I wanted to change. And I found myself constantly trying to push myself outside of my comfort zone. I took different people-centric jobs and eventually landed in the Illinois Army National Guard. And that taught me to really grow and strengthen my, my personal development muscle and became unintentionally intentional on growth, on learning and discipline and just being the best version of me that I can be. After I returned from a combat deployment in Iraq where I suffered a traumatic brain injury, I came home and struggled with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and I relied on substances and developed unhealthy drinking habits. But I tapped into that, that discipline, that muscle of personal development that I'd, I'd grown into and leaned into post-traumatic growth. My transformation happened, happened slowly at first, but I realized I'd gotten away from who I am at the core. And once I started doing the work, I've been able to live out my personal why. I figured out who I am at my core and who I wanted to be and why I do what I do. And my why is to simply live and share a life of continued growth so that we may all overcome adversity and live a fulfilling life. That's why I do what I do. And that has evolved, that has surfaced that has been written in stone through the life that I lived through those experiences. And that's why I do what I do. And you'll see how I came to that even more as we get into today's session. But I mentioned together is better and living by example to lead by example. I am together today with Carrie from Hugh Life. Carrie, can you just give us a little spiel? What is Hugh Life? Yeah, thank you, Dave. So HUE stands for Human Understanding and Engagement, and we inspire action for the greater good of human understanding and engagement. And we do that through uh, trainings, through facilitation, through coaching and mentoring to really help people understand one another, to understand that although uh, we walk through life differently, we have different life experiences, and those life experiences change and help shape what we think is possible, but there is power and understanding and new perspective and being able to uh, just opens this door for, door for all different kinds of innovation and, and collaboration. So we are a team, uh, our home base, meaning our mailbox is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, but we are spread out, our team there that you see in that picture spread out all throughout the country. Uh, so yeah, a little bit about Hugh Life. That's the what I get paid to tell you about us. A little bit about me and, and where I come from. I live in North Central Iowa, so Mason City, Clear Lake area, Hancock County. I uh, found uh, Dave and, and uh, some of my colleagues when I was doing uh, prevention work. I was a director of a community coalition in our county, very rural, 11,000 people in North Iowa, and we had a drug free community grant. Uh, so went through that uh, cycle and also served on the board of AC4C, which is Alliance of Coalitions 
uh, in Iowa statewide coalition who also had a drug-free community grant. And I learned these facilitations tools uh, through that process and really trying to authentically engage people. Uh, I really thought when I was asked to step in as the director that who wouldn't want to help youth, right? Who wouldn't want to help health outcomes uh, in mental health awareness and just really be active in that. And I found very, very quickly that um, really engaging the community around that wasn't so easy. And we spent a lot of time um, trying to figure out what we were supposed to do and how were we supposed to get people on board. And we had this grant that said, you're supposed to do this, but why are you not participating? And uh, some of these tools and, and this why uh, came out of changing the way that we approached people, understanding why we were at the, under, uh, at the table, what drew me to the work, and then aligning our whys with other people who had the same why. And how could we really then create change and impact within our communities when we really aligned ourselves uh, in that way? And so my why through this is really, and through my whole life has been able, it has been around building skills in others so that they are empowered to change their lives in their communities. So I'm super excited to be here with you and share a little bit more about uh, my experience, so. All right, and quick little Zoom tutorial. Um, great to see y'all on camera. We will be using breakout rooms. We'll be using the chat box as well. Like I said, we've got a Google Doc and also we'll put the workbook in as a PDF as well. And if you have tech questions, uh, something's acting wonky on your end, feel free to shoot Katrina a message in the chat box or Carrie or I as well. And we will do our best to provide you tech support there stuff happens we get it no no worries also i know y'all are busy so if you have to step away for a minute no big deal but please do let one of us know that you're stepping away because we will be doing partner breakouts and we don't want to pair you up with somebody and have them stuck in the breakout wondering where their partner is all right then here's what we're doing today we're gonna do some introductions we want to give you all a chance to to connect as well and then we're gonna talk about prevention what does it mean to be a prevention leader and the remainder is going to be about digging going to be about sifting through our personal stories our personal experiences and journeys to uncover and then start to craft your own personal why statements because like it says there people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it. That applies oh so much to prevention. Absolutely. All right. So Carrie, I will put the links and stuff in the chat box if you want to prep us or get us ready for this. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Dave. So as uh, Dave is putting uh, our workbook here in the chat, when you open that, it'll open up a Google Doc. It should ask you to make a copy of it. Is a shared uh, documents or not a shared document. So when you open it and you click uh, copy, it should open one for yourself so that you're not seeing what everybody else is typing. If you're having a problem with that link, please let us know. Send us a chat. We'll get you a new one. Uh, but should open up here and then you're going to uh, turn to pay, turn to one of the pages in there, which is a kind of that introduction. So you'll see your table of contents when you get in there and then your introduction. So just take a couple of minutes and type in there, who am I and what do I do? So imagine that you're meeting us for the first time and I'm, hi, my name is Carrie and uh, I am a trainer facilitator here at Hue Life. Go ahead and type that in. How do you introduce yourself? Yeah, let me see if we can, uh, oh, Dave's got it in the chat already. If you can't get into the Google Doc, there's a PDF there for you. So you should see that PDF link above there. Go ahead and click on that. It'll ask you to download that workbook.
All right, so we're going to move in uh, into breakout rooms here in just a moment and do our introductions. So we're just going to randomly assign you to some breakout rooms. There'll be three, four, four people per room. Uh, you will have uh, some time there. So introduce yourself and then share one thing that comes to mind when you think of a prevention leader. One thing that comes to mind. Pearl, do you see in the chat there, there are two links that are above. One is a Google Doc and one is a PDF. Dave's put them in there again. So click on those links in the chat there. All right. So Dave, are we ready for breakouts? Introduce yourself. And what do you think of when you think of a prevention leader? Kylie's in here a couple of times. She was kind of some computer issues. Before everybody comes back, the puppy's snoozing oh, over there on the couch yeah. now. <laughs> All right. 12 seconds. Welcome back. Welcome back. Dun, 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 dun. Can you believe I only had one cup of coffee and I'm all, I just love this stuff. I love it. Awesome. We got everybody. Correct. Everybody is back. Awesome. So just went into breakout rooms just to do some introductions with each other, learn who else uh, is in on this Zoom with you all. And uh, want, we asked you to share something about yourself and then what comes to mind when you think of a prevention leader. So let's just get a couple of examples out. Someone who wants to come off of mute and tell us just a little bit about what you talked about in your breakout session. Anyone we just introduced share? ourselves and ours. Um, we didn't talk about um, what uh, comes to mind as a uh, prevention leader. Uh, that's all right, right? Um, compassion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rhonda. Hey, empathy. Absolutely. Thank you. Partner. Mm hmm Willingness to uh, continue to um, learn and improve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so with that, Dave, let's get into uh, our session here today. Yeah, all right. So just got you primed a little bit thinking about what does it mean to be a prevention leader? And this is something that I just get so, <laughs> Just here's good thing I have a standing desk because I get so passionate and fired up about what it means to prevent later. Like Katrina was saying during the introduction, it doesn't matter what your job title is. When it comes to prevention, we are all prevention leaders. Whether we're a parent, we're a volunteer, we're a coalition member, coalition leader, a regional prevention center, employee, director, state level, how we show up, how we live how we interact, how we engage with others and have a positive impact when it comes to prevention, when it comes to our communities, when it comes to the culture, the environment within our communities as well. And 
there's a saying that I like to share in that, you know, you often hear, you know, you got to lead by example. But when it comes to prevention, I believe there's more to it than just that. You've got to live by example if you want to lead by example. And as prevention leaders, three of the big pillars are to build safety, just as you, you stated during those one word, you know, empathy, compassion. Then sharing vulnerability is also a key pillar to be a prevention leader. And it's not just that first person that shares a vulnerability. It's how you respond to others when they share their vulnerability with you. And then it's that establishing purpose for the work you do, why you do what you do. And so that's what we're really going to hone in on. But because us as individuals, how we show up as prevention leaders has an impact. I wanna just pause first and get your fingers fired up. I would love for you to just head over to the chat box and want you to just share how, how are you showing up today on a scale of one to 10? We're all busy, we've all got stress, got stuff going on, but how are we showing up today? With one being, ah. Uh, I'm here, but I really don't want to be here. I'm just, uh, I just want to go back to bed versus 10 where you're like me. You just can't stand still. You're so excited. How are y'all showing up today? And it's okay. Wherever you're at, I get it. And I appreciate y'all being here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to be showing up differently. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, got that good spectrum, that good mix. I get it. Yep, I, all right. <laughs> um, so seeing the, the six and three quarters, um, my mind may have went to um, nine and three quarters, a little Harry Potter. <laughs> I've never seen him until I got married, and now every fall I get to watch the entire series with my wife. <laughs> Uh, well, no matter the number you're at, I do greatly appreciate you for, for showing up today, for taking time, for being here and having this conversation that we're going to have today. So now I invite you to, to come off of mute and share, where do you find yourself feeling inspired or motivated? to do the work that you do. Building relationships and implementing change across our coalition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few more. Where do you find yourself feeling inspired to do the work that you do? You have in the chat when I connect with others and see them grow. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. When I'm with kids, knowing we can make a difference. Ah, uh, yeah. Lavonia. Lavonia. Did I say that right? I'm sorry. Yeah, Lavonia. Lavonia. Um, just waking up, having a passion to go out there, have, helping those that are less fortunate um, and helping them see them grow, whether it's one person or two, just helping. Yeah. Let's flip it. Where do you, where do you feel kind of disengaged or, uh, oh, wait, I see we got one in the chat box still. So when my team gets excited about the work they're doing in the community. Yes, yes. All right. All right. Now let's look at the other side of that question. Where do you find yourself disengaged or unmotivated? Chat box when I see overdose numbers continue to rise. Deadlines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I find myself disengaged when I feel like I made a good connection with clients or a client and then they just stop replying. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carrie, I can't keep up with the chat box. Would you give the, some of those voice for me, please? Oh, I just yeah, see yeah. it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, push back from the community when grant rules don't seem con uh, conducive to change. When I'm feeling not making big enough impact. Absolutely. So. Not having the right tools to engage with leaders. No, oh, one more. Red tape when management or executives are indifferent or seem like they're caring about the work being done. All right. All right. Feel free to unmute at any time, too. This is just one big ongoing conversation today but absolutely lean in that chat box as well. For me, it's being overwhelmed or when you have those individuals that just want to keep pulling on you and you just at the brink of exhaustion and you just there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me, it's like being overwhelmed with reporting and deadlines and just expectations that have nothing to do with the hands-on, feet on the ground kind of work that we started this for. Now we're constantly jumping through, you know, whatever the regulations are to get funding or to stay, you know, relevant. Um, and and I want to work. I'm more inspired when I work hand in hand with somebody. Mm -hmm. Rebecca says policy work where you don't know where to start or how to measure the impact. Apathy from community members. How does this all impact you or the work that you do? Frustration, less motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's keep that chat box energy going. Would love for everybody to, to put in the chat box just one thing you're hoping to get from our time together today. See that chat waterfall. Just one thing you're hoping to get from our time together today. Inspiration, new ideas, inspiration, build out my why. Yeah, keep them coming. See how fast Carrie and I can read. Da, 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 da. <laughs> there we go, increased knowledge. Uh, who, uh, who to get to others, others on, get, how to get others board. on board. A more defined why. Gain knowledge and inspiration and practical strategies connect with diverse community members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm, how to work with difficult coworkers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Marvelous. Marvelous. Well, we're going to check back in with, with some of those with our closing conversation as well today. So I'm glad those are in the chat box so we can, we can see how things are going and how we did. Oop. That was like a double click there. Carrie, what, what are we doing today? <laughs> All right, so we are gonna talk about why. Uh, and the content that we're discussing, you can learn and do deeper studies on with both Find Your Why and Start With Why, both books that were phenomenal by Simon Sinek. Uh, that we really felt was helpful in doing community engagement. When you really understand that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So leading with why, understanding what it is that gives you those goosebumps, what it is that you're really looking at doing right? Getting people excited, it's people who want to learn more about why you do what you do. Being able to, rather than saying, hi, my name is Carrie, I'm a prevention uh, specialist. I work for this XYZ coalition. We use environmental strategies and this uh, SPIF to engage others in, you know, improving community outcomes. 
right? And we start to vomit all of this information about what it is that we do, but never really talk about why we're here. Then it's the why that brings people to the table. And a really great example of leading with why is I have a dream speech by Martin Luther King Jr. If that speech was titled, I have a plan, I have a 10 step plan to uh, you know, move the civil rights movement, it wouldn't have been as inspirational. People flocked because they shared the same belief. He invited people who had that same dream to rally at the Civil Rights March in Washington, DC in 1963. They came to Washington, not because of him, but they came for themselves. They came for what they believed in and they came for the why. So when we think about what does this mean to lead with why, how do we change that conversation, that introduction of why we do what we do? We're going to do a little snippet video here that Dave's going to share with us to really understand what is this concept and then what do we need to think about when we start with why? The why was born out of pain. Um, it was never an academic or commercial exercise. It was born out of a time in my life, many years ago, 10 years ago, where I had lost my passion for what I was doing. I owned my own small business. I was living the American dream. Superficially, my life was fantastic. And yet, I didn't want to wake up and do it again. And I was embarrassed by that. You know, who am I to complain about my life? My life seemed perfect, and yet I hated it. And so I kept it to myself. Every ounce of my being, every, all the energy that I had was invested in pretending that I was happier, more successful, and more in control than I felt. And it was debilitating, quite frankly. Um, strange things start to happen when you put yourself in that cycle and the stress starts to build. You start to become paranoid. So for example, I was convinced that um, my employees hated me. I didn't go out much, and it was really, it was really a bad time. And it wasn't until a friend of mine came to me concerned that I wasn't acting myself and basically offered me nothing more than moral support. Whatever you need, I got your back, I'm worried about you. And it was that simple act that gave me the courage to face my own problem. And it was that simple act that gave me the courage to seek out a solution, to go back to the way I used to feel, to be passionate about something again. There was a confluence of events. And I made this discovery that Every single organization on the planet, even our own careers, always function on the same three levels. What we do, how we do it, and why we do it. And it was based on the biology of human decision-making. It wasn't some highfalutin management theory. It was based on brain stuff. And I realized I knew what I did and was good at it. And I knew how I did it. I could tell you what was different or special about the way I did things, but I couldn't tell you why I was doing it. That was the missing piece. You have to have all three. I became obsessed with this thing called the why. I figured out how to find my why and it restored my passion to levels I had never experienced before. And more importantly, I figured out how to help others find theirs. And I did what anyone would do. When you discover something beautiful, you share it with your friends. And my friends started making crazy life changes themselves. And they started finding happiness and passion that they'd never experienced before. It was me solving my own problem that happened to help others solve it for them too. And people just kept inviting me and I just kept saying yes. I was making huge decisions that were really easy to make. Like I shut down my office and started over again because I realized the business I had built was so inconsistent with my why. All my friends thought I went out of business and they were worried about me. It was the easiest, easiest decision I ever made. In other words, when you know your why, the filter is clear. It's not like there are options. The option is obvious. There's only one option. Share, give, inspire. And everything that I've achieved, any success that I've enjoyed, has all been 100% because of the gracious, just amazing generosity of people around me. My friends, my colleagues, um, um, 
people who just believe what I believe, they're the ones who either introduced me to others or took a risk or said, let me try that, or bought a book or watched a TED talk, or more importantly, sent it to somebody else because they thought they would be inspired by it. For all of the th things that I've done over the past decade, I still feel like I'm at the beginning. I have been saying it for 10 years when everybody says to me, you know, congratulations on X, Y, or Z. My answer is always the same, tip of the iceberg. And I think that's what keeps me inspired, which is, for me, it's a journey. I'm on the right path. I'm walking past the right mile markers. In other words, I know I'm making progress to the vision that I have to build this world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning, inspired to go to work, feel safe when they're there, returning home at the end of the day, fulfilled by the work that they do. When I started the race, I ran by myself. And it's lonely, lonely, lonely. And now I got like a, I got like a thousand people to the left and a thousand people to the right, and a thousand people behind me. And I look around, I'm like, yep, we're gonna change the world. We're gonna change the world. There you go. I love you. Love that video. Goosebumps every time uh, I watch it. Let's just have a, a little conversation uh, about that. And uh, I want you to get ready to type in the chat box. Dave and I are call these out as they come in. But when you reflect back on that video, what is one word or an image that pops in your mind when you reflect on that video? Let's get everybody in the chat. Word or image? pops in your mind when you think about that video. Starting. So joyful. Hope. Tip of the iceberg. Doing this work with others. Energy. Energy. Questioning. Light. Fearless. Hope. Brave. Ah, the image of the three circles with the what, the how, and the why in it. Change. Change. So let's shift a moment and let's have some uh, come off mute and just tell us where have you felt inspired when you think back through your life? Where have you felt inspired? Come off mute. Tell us. This might be an untraditional answer, but I have a senior in high school that's getting ready to go to college and to see him starting his life in that realm has been very inspiring. Mm -hmm. so. Let's get a couple more examples out. Where have you felt inspired? Um. This may also be weird. <laughs> um, I'm an immigrant and an Asian and I'm non-binary. Um, <clears throat> and before I started this life, I worked in politics for 10 years at the state capital or the capital like the of the United States. Um, so, you know, I was really popular <laughs> um, and often was told I couldn't do anything. So I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so my biggest inspiration has always been people telling me no. Mm -hmm. And then I do it. So yeah, um, people sometimes find that odd, but uh, usually if someone tells me no, I turn around and just go do it. For the most part, sometimes the no is appropriate, but um, you know, yeah. 
my spouse has learned that uh, they'll tell me the opposite because I will, when they say no, then I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, don't, yeah. Just don't, don't, don't challenge me. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell me I can't do something. I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Watching children play, being part of the solution. So how about on the opposite side of that? Where have you found yourself uninspired? I think not being inspired was when you, as you get older, so I put negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. I think you get that as a child and it, it spills over into adulthood. So you have to find what does inspire you because as an adult, we take from childhood into our adulthood because I didn't have a voice as an adult and because I let somebody take that from me as a child and I wouldn't speak up for myself. So now I advocate for others as well as myself because I, I will hold everything inside, you know? So I wasn't inspired to do anything because people told me that I wasn't, I was less than, you know, so I wasn't inspired to do anything because I thought I wasn't smart, you know, so I wasn't, I wouldn't apply myself. So I wasn't inspired to do anything. So everything I did, I quit. I would never finish anything. So I wasn't inspired to do anything. Yeah, thank you. Some good ones coming in the chat here too, waiting for leadership to take action on pressing needs of the community. When executives called work staff despicable during contract negotiations, when racism, sexism, heterosexualism feels intractable and credit was not given. Yeah, lots of experiences where we've really felt uninspired uh, by those around us or the circumstances that we've been in. I want us to think about now what has led you to where you are? And Lavanya talked about it just now as well, but really thinking about what got you here. What has led you to where you are today? Who has made an impact on your life? What events have shifted your journey and what impact has that had? So when we think about those questions, uh, we'll flip our slide here. I want you just to take a few minutes and get out a piece of paper or open a Word doc and reflect on these questions. Kind of start to write down, how did I get here? What has made that impact or who has made that impact on my life? What events have maybe shifted my journey, led me here, had me take a different direction? And then what impact has that had on myself, on the work that I do, on the communities in which I serve? So we're just gonna take a couple of minutes here to just do some self-reflection before we get into an activity of really understanding why we do what we're doing. And Dave said that we are on page five in the workbook as well. There is some practice places. Dave, can we drop those one more time? I think we had some people join in after our last breakout that didn't get those two work that workbook. Um, Dave, could you also post the, um, oh, there it is. Thank you.
All right. I'm going to wrap up your thoughts as you're uh, looking through that. Again, it's in the workbook, so you can kind of keep it up as you're going through. But uh, I'm going to hand it to Dave, who's going to walk us through the exercise of really taking our experiences and our personal story of how we got here to really dig deep into understanding what is our why. And then we're going to talk about how we can lead with why to attract others with a similar why uh, to do some amazing, impactful collaboration. Dave. Absolutely. And keep those notes handy because we'll be coming back to those. But this was just a, a jump start to, to get us moving in that direction towards uncovering your why. As we've been saying, we do a really good job of explaining what we do and sometimes even how we do it, but it really does take practice to think about and lead with why. It doesn't, uh, <laughs> it doesn't usually pique someone's interest learning more unless they do similar work as you do, right? I mean, I don't know how many times I've told people, yeah, I work in substance misuse prevention. Okay, great, right? They don't know what that is, they don't, okay. I can also tell folks, you know, when they ask me what I do, I could say, hey, I'm the CEO and founder of DJC Solutions, a modern day multifaceted consulting company. Great. Okay, cool. Whatever, Dave. So when we think about engaging our stakeholders, we usually lead with what we do. And today we're here to challenge you to lead with why you do what you do and how that might change how they engage. Because when we understand why others are coming to the table, when we understand why we're coming to the table, it gives us insight on what those stakeholders are able to contribute and how we are inviting them to be involved and what we're inviting them to be involved with. Sometimes when your why and your organization, your coalition's why don't necessarily align with that stakeholder, they may not be as engaged as we would hope them to be. You know, you can align their why with the coalition, the organizational's why to really increase individual's level of involvement. Because when you lead with why, why you do what you do, others who believe what you believe will be inspired to engage, be inspired to contribute, to be inspired to help. It's like a magnet that draws others in rather than saying, here's what we do. We need you to do this. We need funding. We need this. We need X, Y, or Z. But when you talk, talk about why you do what you do, it gives that, that purpose folks can rally behind. And, you know, like I said, I could say, hey, I'm the CEO and founder of DJC Solutions. Or I could say, hey, I connect driven individuals and organizations to sustainable habits aligned experiences, and next level excellence for an abundantly fulfilling life. And I do that through a suite of dynamic customized services, including individual and group coaching, group facilitation, training, podcast network, course creation, and much more. But that's, that's a little more in-depth than just, ah, I'm the founder of DJC Solutions, a consulting company, right? Talk about how and why I do what I do for that abundantly fulfilling life. Another example would be the Mid-America PTTC. At the Mid-America PTTC, they are creating a culture of community across the four state region so that they can come together and support each other and making our community safer, healthier, and happier. That's why they do what they do. What they do is they provide substance misuse prevention, training, and technical assistance. How they do it? Well, they use participatory methods to create space for all voices to be heard and valued and they leverage technologies to foster and build connection. So that's what it can sound like when you start to lead with why, not just what you do. I want you to go back to that introductions page. It was page one, and now go to page two of the workbook. And I want you to separate what you do from how you do it. We'll worry about why in a few minutes. All going back to that, we think about engaging stakeholders, we usually lead with what we do. And so we're working towards discovering your why. I'm going to take just a few minutes here 
and actually separate out what you do from how you do it. It should be on page two of your workbook. Give about one more minute, separating out what you do from how you do it. Some it might be easy. Others, it might be a little challenging. How you do what you do. Thirty more seconds. <clears throat> we'll worry about the why, just what you do, separate it out from how you do it. All right, and any uh, anyone want to share the next version of of their introduction? You separate out what you do from how you do it. Who wants to uh, share what you've come up with so far? And we know it is just a draft, just a start. What y'all got? Arda. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm a counseling faculty at a community college in California. And so I provide a personal career and educational assistance, in addition, resources for any of those. How I do it is through appointments and workshops. I inform, I cheer, I challenge, I check for understanding, and I follow up. So that's my draft. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I like it. Separating it out, how you do what you do. You're from a couple other folks. I'll go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Kate. Okay. I'm a uh, social work supervisor and a therapist in private practice. And uh, I collaboratively, collaboratively explore in therapeutic conversation the goals, habits, and dreams of clients and staff to create a more filling, more fulfilling, joyful, and sustainable life. Yes. Oh, that so much there. So much there. Yes. I like it. I like it. Thank you, Kate. Anyone else want to share? All right, we all have already been doing a lot of work to, to sift, to dig, to uncover your whys, the purpose, the cause or belief that, that drives you to do what you do, that helps filter decisions so there is really, like Simon said, one answer, a simple answer, and it all comes from your why. So you know what to do to move forward. And it, finding your why begins with an origin story. The sum of all the experiences that we've had growing up, those lessons learned. And these stories, they, they shape our, our natural best and reflecting on these past stories and experiences, you'll start to discover how they have affected your life and shaped who you are today. And oop, I forgot I had animations. <laughs> All right, groovy. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to move into a partner activity because we're going to pair you up and your partner's going to listen to your stories to identify themes, ideas, words, or phrases that reoccur in your story, what has led you to where you are today. These themes weave together will start to define who you are at your natural best. And, and for me, what this was like when I did this in one of Simon's workshops with his team, I shared how I was a college junior and I got deployed to Iraq and some of the, the experiences, the traumas that I had while I was there from being blown up and all that stuff to then coming back, jumping right back into college struggling with the undiagnosed traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and drinking. I shared that, but then I shared how my dad was a role model for me. He gave me that hope because he was a Vietnam veteran, and he has led a successful life and a man I love and respect and look up to. So he gave me that hope. And then I, I started to work on myself, and I tapped into what made me a good soldier, my discipline, my determination, my drive. That, when I tap back into that, that helped me focus on post-traumatic growth and really face that adversity, the challenges I was dealing with. As I share those stories, it starts to show me that living by example, my father was the way to go, but then also sharing that so others can experience the same hope that I needed to help face that adversity is an important piece to live and share a life of continued growth because that focus of continued growth to be the best version of me is what helped pull me forward as well. That's what helped me overcome adversity. So that's, that's part of my origin story. Now mine is very personal, very deep, but as we move into this partner activity, Share what you are comfortable sharing. Don't, don't feel pressure to share anything you're not comfortable, you don't want to. This could be a resume. For me, I could say, hey, you know, I worked as a college police officer and saw the impact alcohol and drugs had. Saw a big impact on that. And that paired with my personal experience as being a college student at that college campus. Helped me see the importance, the need for prevention work. And that's what led me working into prevention, which is part of why I do what I do. It could be I worked at, you know, that stepping stone. And then I went from there to writing a book to being uh, a professional trainer once I got my master's in training and development. And so sh please just share what you're comfortable sharing. But Carrie, will you walk us through the actual instructions while I put the links in the chat box or the pull the example up to show folks? Yeah, Pretty please. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is, as Dave said, this is a partner activity. We're going to be going in. You're going to be kind of sharing your story. Uh, so you'll take turns. So uh, if Dave and I were going into a, a breakout room together, uh, Dave may go first and share his story. And like I said, he can go as deep as he wants. He may just kind of give me high level resume, right? What are things that happened that got him here to uh, the position that he's in now. He may be a little, tell me a little bit more about the why and the drive behind those. Either way is fine. My job at that point is really just to be an active listener. Listen to the things that he's saying. No judgment. This is not a therapy session. This is not a feedback session. Uh, but it's just kind of listening for some connections, listening for Dave to hear about some things that are that I'm hearing maybe often in some themes uh, that that may help him think through kind of the purpose and his why. So once uh, we've you've Dave has shared, uh, I can give back Dave some things to be able to say some things I heard you say were right. I heard some some uh, you know, here we go. Thank you. Some facts that you told me right. Some dates. Some facts. Some maybe behind the scenes meaning some themes that I'm hearing you talk about that might be connected and giving those back to Dave so that he's able to help think through what his why statement might be. And once we've done that, we're going to switch roles. So then I will tell my story uh, again as, as deep or as high level as I'm comfortable sharing in my, uh, and Dave's gonna listen to me. 
write down some facts and some things that he's hearing in my story, and then maybe some uh, underlying connections that maybe I don't always see or realize. So. If you are, um, we're going to put you in breakout rooms and pairs in a minute, seeing people drop off pretty fast at this point. Because if you are not able to have a conversation and be a good partner, this is going to be really hard for you to do. So, uh, Dave, uh, instructions or anything else that I missed? Um, we've got breakout rooms set up. We've got one group of three. I'm going to have it set so you can come back to the main room at any time. So if your partner loses connectivity, something happens, just come on back and let us know. Um, but yes, so in that the document that I'm showing here, just focus on the facts, the meaning. Don't worry about the red contribution impact to so that. Just grab the facts from the story. So mine would be, hey, deployed as a, a junior in college had combat experience, came back, faced a lot of adversity. The meaning behind my dad being having that role model, that, that glimmer of hope, post-traumatic growth as well. So being able to tease out those different elements and sharing that with your partner to help them uncover and craft their why. What questions do you all have? When you think of those two, you can also just take notes on a piece of paper. You don't have to use a Google Doc or the PDF. They'll have to be your own timekeepers as well. We'll be put into the breakout for 17 minutes with a 60 second countdown timer. All right. Without further ado, let's uh, have some conversations. We're here to help if you need anything. The click in there. All right. Got a few more moments before everybody joins us. Hopefully you had some, some good conversations and started to help each other tease out your why statements. Got a couple groups of three, so hopefully uh, they looks like they're using every last bit of time. There's never enough time, never enough time. All right. Here everybody comes. All right, welcome back everyone. Thanks for those that had to uh, pivot and adjust based on some technical glitches and appreciate your, your grace in with us in that. But hopefully you had some marvelous conversations. Keep those notes handy because that was just the first step. Just the first step. So now, now that your partner has shared some of the themes with you, it's time to start to pull it all together in the structure, the magic formula. And I'm not a math guy, but this is a formula that I get is that two, so that that is how you can structure, how you can craft, how you can create your personal impact statement, your why statement. What is the, the verb that you do to create the impact? Uh, the red text in that document. And you want to start with what is the contribution that you're driving to make? Some examples we've got on the screen to enrich, to connect, to inspire, to trust, to build. What are some of those similar words that that your partner may have shared with you during that activity? What are what are some of those words that are starting to bubble up, starting to emerge? Some of those verbs. Who's got a couple examples to share?
I think we both have some really great stories, but I see the word trust on here. And I think mm -hmm. that it would have been hard to have that initial conversation with somebody you know and don't really trust. Um, so having it with somebody I didn't really know actually mm -hmm. worked out really well um, because we don't have any expectations of each other. Um, and I think we both helped each other a lot. I mean, we we really had some good conversation. All right, thank you, Carla. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, I know your minds are likely going, lots of ideas, lots of thoughts. And we're gonna give you a chance to start to craft your why. I'm gonna put you back in the breakout, same pair for some, some more time so you can start to craft your own why statement. You can bounce ideas off of your partner. They heard your stories, they shared their feedback. You can work in silence and then say, hey, here's what I've got, here's what I'm struggling with help each other out, but also know that this is just a, a jump start. Today, odds are you won't have it perfectly honed in to exactly what you want, but that's okay. This is my why here, and it is version, I don't know, four or five. This is something you, you create a, a start. You get some thoughts down on paper. You let it sit for a few days. You come back and revisit it. Does it still give you that that fire inside, that the chills, the goosebumps, or you need to shift it a little bit, edit it, revise it, share it with a friend or colleague and say, hey, if I say this is my why, what do you think of this? Get their input, get their perspective. I've had folks that have actually gone through this, this scenario, this activity with different partners multiple times. And each time they're able to get more honed in on their why statement. And these don't have to be done in order. You don't have to come up with the two, the verb first. You can start with your impact and then think about your contribution or vice versa. You've got examples or some words to get you going in your workbook as well. But that's next to start to put these together. Let me get the breakout rooms going. What questions do you have while I set up breakout rooms for another little bit of time? I have a question, Dave. Mm -hmm. Can it also come from um, a place of, um, like if, can the why come from like you have now uh, in your life now, there's like a different purpose type of thing? like you're going through and that's okay. Your why is gonna come from many places and it doesn't have to be from a certain era or time period in your life. Okay. You'll, it can come from right now. It can come from with this new perspective you have on your past. A okay. perspective has shifted, has changed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? What page are we on in the workbook? Ah, good question. So it is that same table you're filling out. Um, it's just the bottom, so the red text. And that is page nine. Yeah. And here are those thought starters here at the bottom as well. We've got a space for you to start filling those in. So I'm going to put you back in the breakout rooms for nine minutes with a 60 second countdown timer and we are here for you if you have any questions and then bring y'all back invite a few folks to kind of share where they're at what they've got and have a nice little conversation to wrap things up all right happy writing Right, welcome back, Rhonda and Rebecca. Hopefully you uh, had a good conversation there. You missed out on the fact that I now have to play tug of war with a puppy while we finish out this session. <laughs> it's really Dave, he's playing with a squeaky toy. Yep, right, right, it's a little frog squeaky toy. <laughs> It was her birthday present. She just turned one year old. Oh my God. Oh, Basil the boxer. She's now one. 
Oh my goodness. Mine's 14 and I am starting oh. to get nervous. Yeah. Oh. 14. Oh, yeah. Well, I had a, a lab that I got the summer I came back from Iraq, and he lived to 16 and a half. He was my best buddy. Hopefully, you have several more years with yours there, Rhonda. All right. Well, we are recording, and we are back. And I was just sharing some struggles or challenges I'm having with a, a puppy that knows it's normally my lunch break, and we get to go outside and play. Uh, <laughs> but before that... I'd love to just uh, hear from a few folks. How'd that go? Anybody willing to share what you've got so far? We all know it's also just a draft. There's not that expectation to be perfect. Yeah, I can go. Um, yeah. I got real passionate and started sweating, so I'm just going to warn everybody. Um, <laughs> so I so I talked a little bit, or a lot, I guess, about how my why is a lot like my why why was for when I worked in politics, which is um, about affecting change. Um, I talked about how, you know, there's a lot of reasons people go into politics, which is usually bad reasons. Um, but I was there to not be bad, <laughs> um, but to like actually make change. And uh, that is what I'm here to do as well in prevention. And to me, I mean, I'm still, gosh, I'm looking at the calendar. I guess I'm starting yesterday. Yesterday, I think I started my fifth month. So I'm very new to the um, to the world um, of prevention. But um, as I'm like starting to figure things out and it's like becoming more and more clear, you know, with each passing day, especially like as I'm working on like the opioid response um grants and like working on my problem gambling stuff um like some of this stuff as I'm like reading like what's happening in other states what's being become like becoming illegal in terms of like harm reduction um like it's just common sense that this should be legal because it can prevent death like right and so for me this is all about like this is affecting change and this can change lives and, you know, you hear like, well, this is just going to like, if we let them have fentanyl strips, this is just going to encourage them to keep using. But yes, right. That's yeah, that's true. But eventually this could cause them to eventually want to change and become clean. And it's all about affecting change and preventing deaths and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so for me, it's all about affecting change. Like, that's my why. And I'm going to stop before I become sweaty and super, super, super passionate. I'm over here just, uh, I love it. Passion. That, yes, uh, y'all are seeing why this this session is one of my favorites because it taps into that passion. Yes. Okay. Would you mind pronouncing your name for me too? So. Oh, yeah, I get this all the time. So my, it, it's, I forgot to put the dot. I'm starting to need to start using the dot. So the D it's just B without the E. Okay. Um, that's my first name. Um, and then Augie is just my last name. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say D, and then I was like, no, I might be missing something. So. Nope, nope. It's just D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, D, for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who else wants to share? I can, I guess. So my reason for being here is actually pretty easy. I already know my why. I knew when I got here what my why was. So, but for my two so that I got to inspire the youth of today so that they have someone to inspire them to succeed regardless of home environment. <sighs> Just felt like a nice hug. Just so, so good. So good. Yes. Uh, anyone else want to share? Well, these were just a start. Y'all did a lot of work today. It's something to revisit, to let it simmer in the crock pot or stew in the crock pot for a little bit and then come back. And you can even use these as your, your North Star, your 
your calling point, a nice little reminder. In fact, my computer background is my why statement. So when I turn on my computer in the morning, I'm reminded why I do what I do. Yeah. All right. Well, Carrie, do you want to walk us through a nice little closing conversation before we uh, bring today to an end? Yeah, so I do want to hear all voices for this last one as we as we close out. So I'm going to use a, a facilitation tool that we call stacking. So I will call out three names in a row so you know the order in which uh, you're going to go. And just in one or two words, uh, what is standing out to you from today? One or two words or an image. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to go Miranda, Elizabeth, and Catherine. Um, two words that really stood out to me um, was why, you know, finding your purpose and also um, just connecting. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth, Catherine, uh, Christine. I'm not sure if Elizabeth well, is here, so we'll go Christine, Catherine, and Lavanya. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. I said passion and um, motivation, I think. Nice, nice. Catherine, Lavanya, uh, and Ray. Uh, collaboration and fodder for thinking. Lavanya, uh, Ray, and Selena. Um, connecting and knowing my why. Ray, Selena, and Carla. What, why, and passion. Yes. Selena, Carla, and D. Gratitude. Carla was an awesome partner. So thankful for her. And um, excitement to get closer to a why. Yes. Carla, D, and Marta. Um. <laughs> I just went blank. I'm sorry. Um, I think the impact, I I could just like talk about all of them, but I'll try really hard to make this three words. Impact, uh, the why, and remembering. D, Marta, and Emma. Uh, passion, motivation, and connection. Marta, Emma, Rhonda. Inspiration. And why? Emma, Rhonda, Alicia. Truth and vulnerability. Rhonda, Alicia, and then Rebecca, did you start us off? We haven't gotten yet. Okay. I think hope and compassion was a lot of what I heard today. Excellent. Alicia and Rhonda. Rebecca, say I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say connecting and passion. Rebecca. Um, <clears throat> passion and um, need to define my why. Absolutely. So anyone can answer as you feel uh, compelled. Uh, where were you? What was a high point for you today as you went through this? They playing with the dog. <laughs> Basil's always a high point. He's awesome. She's awesome. <laughs> I would say one thing that really stuck out to me was when a, a bunch of people started to drop off when we were about to go into breakout rooms. And um, Carrie, you, is it Carrie? Yeah. You said, uh, if you can't have a conversation, this works going to be really hard for you to do. Yeah. That was a high point for me, I would say. Because it was like, yeah, that's totally true. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, for me, no offense, Emma, <laughs> was when Emma and I got paired for a second time. So we came to be, um, if for anybody not realizing what's going on, Emma, Emma is my boss. Um, so we came to get repaired and Marta and I got paired and it was just like a really good conversation both times and like a really great connection um, about just everything, um, how we got here, just all of it and while we're doing it and well actually not to put Marta on blast but she's actually not in prevention but she's still in this 
wanting to learn um and just was just really great um, we actually have a lot of sim similarities too about how we got here so yeah well, I'm glad you weren't with Emma because I really enjoy getting to know her <laughs> um, She's and, good. and Miranda. Um, I just think it's so uh, it's neat to make those connections with people and and um, to see we have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences and um, what makes the world go around. And it's just uh, it was nice to meet you guys. And I really um, appreciated hearing Rhonda's story and um, it's really inspiring me, to me that uh, that she is, um, you know, has decided to to be in this field, and she it was just she was inspiring to me. Where did you feel yourself? Thank really you. Big? You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome! Where did you find yourself really being challenged? I'm going to be totally 100% honest. I wanted to get off the call when you were like, we're going to go into breakout rooms and talk about, and then you said that thing. And I was like, oh, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was a high point for me. <laughs> me too, Emma. It's worth it if you can hang on, I promise. I think that it's brought up so many different things. There's so many different pieces of my experience in my why that I'm having trouble sorting it out into something cohesive. And I feel like I'm missing, there's some parts of, um, I think like uh, the queer experience that I'm missing in some of that discussion um, that I think I need to now wrap in. And so now I've got like all of these things I've got to think about. So that's the, I think the challenge for me is I'm a little over like there's 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 more in here I think than I than I managed to get to in this space. Absolutely. Absolutely. With that, thank you for sharing, Catherine. Where where was a new insider learning for you? Sometimes doing things you don't want to do is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. Pushing yourself out of a comfort zone is, you know, how we make change and learn and grow. So we opened this uh, session this morning really uh, addressing or acknowledging the fact that this work is really hard. And it's energy draining and sometimes it feels like this endless cycle of fight that doesn't always feel rewarding um, and we did a check-in question around how you were showing up today on a scale of one to ten and i want you to open up your chat and tell us the number you came in at and the number that you're leaving at today how are you showing up and dave tell us the scales again what was the what were the words that you used yes one being, uh, I just want to go back to bed. Well, I'm here. I'm, you can see me, but I'm not really here. 10 being, you're like me and you're just standing here dancing, <sighs> fired up and just want to just talk it all out. Beaming with energy. Seeing some improvements, seeing some, you know, having conversations with, with like-minded folks, with those who push us to be better, who see things in us that we might not always see in ourselves brings us energy and light. And so looks like all the ones uh, went to bed about an hour ago, yep. uh, but yep. thanks for hanging mm -hmm. in uh, and being part of this. Uh, it was rewarding and I, we, Dave and I absolutely love this exercise and it is tough and you're not done yet right you created something to think about and now sharing with somebody else maybe somebody who might know you a little bit better or maybe share with another stranger that you don't know uh and tell your story and keep refining that dave said this is like his fourth or fifth iteration of his why statement and so really uh understanding what it is and then when we think about 
uh, recruiting or, or partnering up with people in our community and being able to lead with why we do what we do, sometimes we start to realize that the people we need at the table aren't always the people who we think. Sometimes it's not the police chief. Maybe it's somebody on the police department who has the same why that we have. Maybe that has had some same struggles or had some same wins, right? Being able to start to have those conversations uh, can really help us understand uh, how we can make big change in our community. So Dave, with that, parting words for you. Yes, uh, y'all did some marvelous work today. You all are prevention leaders making a difference and you spending your time with us is what gives me energy gives me life and gives me hope. And I hope also you notice through sharing your vulnerabilities with, with others has brought you a new sense of connection and feeling supported in the work that you do because prevention is absolutely better together. And together here we are stronger. And I got a rep, prevention is better together. It absolutely is. All right, and Katrina dropped a link in the chat box for the evaluation. It takes three minutes, 100% anonymous. We are, as you know, for my why, committed to continued growth. So greatly do appreciate any and all feedback. And I believe this recording will also go up on the Mid-America PTTC YouTube channel. Uh, in the meantime, too, if you want the slides from today, you can download them here. And they'll also be uploaded with the YouTube video on the PTTC website as well. Don't be strangers because we're in it together. Katrina, I'll turn thank it over to you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Carrie. And thank you, everyone, for joining today. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.